from Miami Beach, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Acronis Global Cyber Summit 2019. Brought to you by Acronis. Okay, welcome back everyone to theCUBE coverage here at the Acronis Global Cyber Summit 2019 in Miami Beach at the Fontainebleau Hotel. Not a bad venue for an event. It's their first inaugural event around cyber protection. Our next guest is a great guest, going to go into great detail. Very fun job, stressful job, Graham, Graham Hacklin, CIO of Rocket Williams Racing Formula One team. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Joe. Great job you have. I mean, it's high pressure, high stakes, data's involved, you can nerd out on all the tech, and it's, it's a part of the business these days. Uh, take a minute to explain the Williams Racing Team, history, and what are you guys up to these days? So Williams, this is Sir Frank Williams' 41st year with this team, 50 years in total he's been in Formula One, uh, won 16 World Championships, not recently, we want to do that again for him, and that's, that's the mission, right? Get up every day, wanting to get back to the front of the grid and, and help Williams to, to win. I, I joined them in 2014. I've been 23 years in total in Formula One. I, I, love, I love the industry, the fast pace, everything you described. There's a bit of stress, obviously, but <laughs> I, I just love the industry, and I joined Williams 2014 to help with the digital transformation, and it's been brilliant. And now, we're not using the transformation word anymore, we're on a digital journey. We've already put a lot of that, that infrastructure in place, moved to the cloud, uh, and, and it's just been, it's been brilliant. And we've had some success on the track. More recently, it's been tough, but we'll get back there. You know, I just had a conversation with Dan Havens, who's the chief growth officer, he's done all the sports deals. We were talking about you know, baseball and the other football, yep. and European football, and also Formula One. The competitive advantage edge is there in the data. Absolutely. AI is here, machine learning is feeds AI. So now you set up the infrastructure, you get operationalized properly. Yeah. This is a big job, it's not just loading software. You got to really think about the holistic system at work. That's that's the great thing, right? We, we, we've got to do the infrastructure right, so you've got to get the basics right. But then if we can do a better job with AI, with machine learning, with the, with the uh, analytics tools that are out there, then the other teams are doing, we can beat them. We don't have the same funding level that they do, but we got really smart people, and people is, your, is our biggest asset. And then the second biggest is data, and making sure that the right engineer has the right data at the right time, so that they can do their job, so that we can set the fastest pit stop time, or that you know we can challenge the cars in front of us, uh, it is really important. So we put a lot of time and effort into into data analytics, but especially video. Video has become huge for us, and obviously then the data size grows massively. Yeah. But data and being able to analyze your competitors, analyze your own car, your two drivers against each other, there's there's a huge amount of uh, uh, data that we are dealing with. Without giving any secrets away, Graham, talk about some of the data um, dynamics that you have going on. What are some of the, the workflows? What are some of the things you're optimizing? You said video. Um, where are you guys looking at? What are some of the key cool things that you're, you're seeing as, the, as an edge opportunity for you? So a Formula One team has this life cycle of a Formula One car where you start in aerodynamics, either in a wind tunnel with a physical model, or you do virtual wind tunnel with computational fluid dynamics, so CFD, so that computation power is really important. Then you go into design, CAD design, that really turns it into something that you can make, so then we're into manufacturing. Then we go to race engineering and all the tools that they use to, to get the optimum out of the car that they're given on, on a race weekend. And then you feed that back in so that every race we're adding performance to the car. And all through the season, we'll add one and a half to two seconds per lap of performance onto that car every, every season. And so that's a really important yeah. loop that you need to be constantly doing. And if you don't, if you, you know, and, you know we've had some issues in, in, in this year, if you don't get that completely right, you will lose time to your I'll competitors. Give an example where it didn't work out, where you're going back to the drawing board. So I, th I think there's been, and it's well publicized, Claire Williams has talked about it, there's been a bit of a, a gap between the results we were getting in the wind tunnel and the reality that was happening on the track. And so we've had to bring that back and make sure that there was a correlation between the tunnel uh, and the track. And our engineering group have been working really hard on that. So that kind of thing can happen. Talk about the engineering backgrounds that are going on behind the scenes. A lot of people you know, look at Formula 1, only the, the hardcore uh, nerds that are nerding out and geeking out on the sport know the, the depth, but what's going on on the engineering front? Because there's a lot of investment you guys are making on engineering. Yeah, and you know, so Formula One fans love the data. I, I think they really love to see the data and work with it. And, and fortunately, you know, the, the people who run Formula One are opening more of that data to the fans. If you left it to the teams, we wouldn't share it with, with the fans because then our competitors see it and we see it as a competitive advantage. But if something's shared for everyone, then, then that's fair. So I think the fans love to see the data and see what we're doing. What we're, 
what we're trying to look at now is automation. You know, humans making decisions has been okay up until probably the last couple of years where some errors have been made in strategy in real time where you've got a few seconds to make a decision. Are you going to pit? A virtual safety car has just been called. You've got three seconds to make a decision. Sometimes the humans are making the wrong decision. So we see automation AI as really having a role in that real time decision making. But we think AI can help us in our factory. The things that we're making, uh, something happens at the track and now we have to change that design. We think introducing automation and AI into that process will really help us as well. Yeah, sports market, sports teams and sports franchises, to me, epitomize digital transformation, digital journey, because the, the fans want it. Um, yeah. There's competitive advantage in running yeah. the team. There's the players, decision making, whether it's baseball or driver. Yeah. And then there's the fans. Um, so I got to ask you on what are you guys thinking about the fan experience because now you've got some data opening up, you've got visualization, potentially apps yep. that show you the cars and in 3D space and some virtual reality potentially. Yep. The old experience was, oh, this is the car, goes by again, hey, we're right. <laughs> comes back again. So bringing, extending the digital fan base yep. experience. What are you guys, oh, There's a huge there? amount of work happening in Formula One and it's great to see you know, the, the, the people who are running Formula One talking about a digital transformation, not just the teams, right? And it was all about the fan experience. We want the fan to feel like they're part of it. So, so Williams did a, a couple of experiments with virtual reality so that you could either be one of the pit crew, so you could be the person holding the, 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 the gun, feel the car coming in, and, and changing the tire, That's or awesome. you can have the driver's view. So the cameras that are on the car are above the driver's head, so you don't get an accurate view. So we brought that down into the helmet, and now you're getting a view wow. of what it's like to be the driver. So a lot, there's been a lot of focus on, on that fan experience and, and making sure that you're not at a disadvantage sitting in this in you know at the track compared to someone who's at home with two televisions or you know or, or, or multiple devices that they're tracking the data on and the GPS data of where the cars yeah. are and, and and hearing some of the commentary of why they're making the decisions they are and when the drivers challenge their engineers I love that bit so you, the engineers got all that data and tells the driver we're gonna we're gonna do yeah. this strategy and the driver challenges them because they're in the car feeling how the yeah. car feels it's I brilliant. think you guys have a great opportunity as an industry because one of the, you look at eSports in the gaming culture. The confluence of that experience-based product coming to Formula One yep. is it's just a perfect fit. Well, it, it, I mean, it's, it's gone. The eSports Formula One has gone huge. We, we run a team as well. Or most of the Formula One teams now have an eSports team. And actually, the, the people who are driving in the eSports teams, their skills are transferable. I, I remember one of the competitions a couple of years ago was to win a drive in the simulator. You became a development driver for one of the Formula One teams. And that shows that those skills are yeah. transferable. So it's great. Yeah, it's beautiful stuff. All right, I want to get back to the Cronus Cyber, yep. uh, Global Cyber Summit here in 2019. Uh, you're here uh, talking to folks, uh, also sharing knowledge. You guys were hit with ransomware, yeah. uh, not once, but twice. Yep. Um, I think you had just joined I think at that time. It before. was during 2014 when, when I first joined and we were, I, you know, we had put as much investment as we could into our cybersecurity, into our protection, um, but we, we were still, we had gaps, and I think, so the first ransomware that we got hit by was inside our network, and it encrypted 50,000 files before we discovered it. Now, we were lucky. We were able to recover all the data from backup, but we knew that it, because it had happened in the middle of a day, someone had, had, had looked at some uh, websites during their lunch break, and by, you know, within a couple of hours, we had discovered it, contained it, corrected it, restored the data. But the second time we got hit was an individual on their computer, off network, and we lost data. And that's the thing I hate the most. You know, That data is so precious to us, losing it, was really upsetting and so we went out into the market to look at how, how can we make sure that our data is being backed up but more than that how can we make sure that that backed up data is protected and there's a number of reasons we want to protect it we want to protect it from things like ransomware but also the thing that you know, people often don't think about with their data is how do we make sure that it's not tampered with at any at any point so when we're at the track and the car is running around the track we're pushing data locally uh, inside the network. We're pushing it to the cloud to do computation and we're sending it back to the UK so that engineers in, at base can work with it. Yeah. What if someone was in those stream of data tampering with it yeah. and we then had fake data? And as we go to you know, more machine learning and automation, if those decisions are being made on bad data, that's going to be a real problem. So we wanted to make sure that our data couldn't be yeah. tampered with so we can adopt new technologies. So that was really important. 
But Williams also have an advanced engineering company. So beyond Formula One, we apply that knowledge and know-how to all sorts of other industries, from healthcare to retail to, to automotive. Um, we've been helping Unilever with some really interesting projects to make ice cream better and, uh, and more efficiently and to help with soap powder. We've got to make sure that that customer data is never tampered with. If we're going to put technology into road cars, that's a very different challenge to Formula One. Yeah. We've got to make sure that that, that whole uh, the IP chain, how, how we develop that technology can be proven and isn't tampered with. It's interesting, supply chain concepts, data protection, merging together, data protection used to be you know, thought after. Yeah. We've got, we got a design, well let's brush up, we've got back, I'll bolt it on. No, no, Not we're anymore. having to build it into the, into the solutions up front. As we're preparing technology for customers, we're having to make sure that we're thinking about the data challenge. So if it's in a car, so we're doing battery technology, we, we won the supply for the first ever electric Aston Martin, right? As that car is driving around, there's going to be data that's important around the, the, the health of the battery yeah. uh, and, and information that, we're, that are, is going to be needed by the driver, but also for later for the, when they're doing the, uh, the servicing on the car. Yeah. We've got to make sure that that data is protected properly. You guys are pushing the envelope on instrumentation, sensors, data, real-time telemetry. But to be honest, Formula One's always been like that, right? We put our first data logger in 1979 on a Formula One car. Honestly, it's been an IoT device since then, right? <laughs> it's not a new thing for F1. So I think we're really experienced. Yeah. Our electronics group are really experienced in how to protect that data as it comes off the car. And we've applied that knowledge to road cars as well. Well, you know, what's great about you guys and the whole industry is that that innovation for the sport is now translating as a betterment for society. Exactly. And I think that is really kind of a, I think, an example of where innovation can come from. Yeah. I mean, places you least expect it, the people doing hard work pays off. It always worried me that Formula One, we spend all the money we spend, right? 100 million pounds, 300 million pounds uh, per year. And at the end of the year, the product that we created gets retired and we create a whole new product. And it always worried me that that technology wasn't reused. Williams are reusing it. You know, we take the, the, the carbon fiber that we use to protect a driver in a Formula One car, we've now applied that to babies in hospitals when they get moved around. We built a carbon fiber unit that moves them around. Aerodynamics design, we've applied to fridges to make them more efficient. So if you've got an open fridge, the cold air doesn't come out into the aisle of the, of the supermarket. We push it back into, into the fridges. I, I love that. It's, it's you know, reuse, taking Nissan Leaf batteries and, and yeah. putting them into a unit that you bolt on the side of a house yeah. and it helps to power the house overnight. You know, it's interesting, Graham, you mentioned digital transformation versus digital journey. You guys are operationalizing it. It's a huge exactly. difference, there's nuance, but yep. transformation, you have yet transformed. Yep. You guys have transformed, so you're on a journey. I got to ask you, um, what is the, uh, some learnings in your, op obviously you operationalize digital? I mean, obviously you got your sport, but now it's translating out to other areas. What's the big learnings that you take away from as a professional and as an individual in the industry uh, from all this? I think initially we were quite conservative and we only went with big players that we were convinced were going to be around in three to five years. I think there's a lot more established you know, cloud providers now, but early on we only went with the big guys because we wanted to make sure that we could get our data out. That if they disappeared, we weren't going to lose our data. I think what, the partnership with the Cronus and, and, and other partnerships we've done has helped us to be more aggressive in terms of our approach towards cloud vendors. We can now take risks with a smaller player who's got a really niche product, but, but it's something that could give us a competitive advantage for half a season three, four races sometimes, we'd go for it. Uh, whereas I think we're a bit conservative at first. But I think all CIOs have to think about, you know, what's their appetite for risk? We did a really good process of mapping that out, discussing it all the way to board level. What, ex what exactly are we prepared to risk? There's some things, you know, car data, we're just not prepared to risk that. Yeah. But there are some things, you know, that, that we can afford to take risks with. Now I've talked to CIOs at finance institutes, they're starting to take risks now. There's core data that they won't be able to, either by regulation or it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. But there's a lot you can com you know, commoditize and put out into the cloud. And if you have a cyber protection foundation, you can take those risks. Exactly. You don't want to be looking over your shoulder, worrying. Because <laughs> you own the data, and sometimes when you go with a cloud provider, it feels almost like they own the data. But when you've got when you've got a partnership like the one we have with Acronis, we know that we own the data. We're backing that data you know, away from the cloud vendor, so we can always get it back. 
Graham, thanks so much for the insight. Love this conversation. I think it's really innovative, cutting edge, and uh, great fun to talk about. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Thank you very it. much, cheers. CUBE coverage here, Miami Beach at the Fulton Blue Hotel for Cronus's Global Cybersecurity 2019 Summit. I'm John Furrier, stay with us for more CUBE Day Two coverage after this short break. Thank you.